Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. My name is Beth Ann. Today um, I want to just gush a little bit about two sort of general fiction books um, that I read and loved uh, this summer. So um, one of them I read a physical copy of, which is Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney. Um, the other one I read on my Kindle, and that was um, Don't Forget to Write by Sarah Goodman uh, Confino. Um, I'll try to remember to put timestamps down below. I'm going to start with Lillian Boxfish, um, although actually before I dive into this one, um, I just want to say that one of the things I love the most about both of these books is that they both feature older female characters who are just absolutely delightful. Like they've sort of chosen their own path in life. They've absolutely rocked it in various ways. Um, we hear a little bit about their struggles um, and they're both just very funny, very good with words, um, just amazing characters. So in Lillian Boxfish, um, that is the title character, Lillian Boxfish. And in Don't Forget to Write, um, that older female character is um, a supporting character, but an incredibly important one uh, to the plot and to the development of the main character. I'll get there in a minute. Anyway, Lillian Boxfish takes a walk. So in this book, um, we follow Lillian Boxfish literally as she goes on a multi-hour walk around New York City on um, New Year's Eve in 1984 and um, or 19 am I getting the year right 1984 um, 1984 Lillian Boxfish uh, in 1984 is 85 years old and she's lived in New York City um, since she was um, a young woman and she unusually at the time in the 1930s 40s 50s um, had a brilliant career as a copywriter, as an um, advertising writer, and um, got paid quite well for that. She was also a published poet, um, so she had a, a stellar career uh, at that time. So now in 1984, she's taking this walk, and it's really kind of a love letter to New York City because you get a lot of the very uh, specific sort of reflections and scene setting in particular places in New York City. And as she goes, she's reflecting on what the city looks like in her um, current time in 1984 and also how the city has changed or not changed um, since she moved there in the 1930s. And we also get her reflections as she's walking about the course of her life. So we basically get kind of her memoir as she thinks through um, important moments of her life. Um, she's very funny, she's acerbic, she's witty, uh, because she was an advertising writer, so she knew how to like catch people and sell things. Um, she has she has a very um, a very contagious voice. Like you just want to read more and more in her voice. This was a gorgeously written book. Um, Lillian is a very complex character. Um, like I always sort of think about what I like the person. I would love to have a conversation with her. I'm not sure that we would be best friends. She's pretty. Um, cynical and dark um, in some ways, in some ways that I appreciate um, and in other ways where um, it's not exactly my cup of tea, but it's fantastic as a character. I'm not, I'm not knocking the book or anything. She's a phenomenal character. Um, so we get her reflections on her marriage, on her divorce, um, mental health struggles. I don't want to go into too much detail because it's the sort of book where you just really have to discover the character as you go along. Um, but those are some of the big things in her life or her career, her marriage, the birth of her son, um, her relationship with her son, which she reflects on uh, throughout the novel, um, her divorce, and then sort of the, the limelight of her career. So she reflects on that as a, um, a woman aging uh, in the career and um, how she sort of, um, what led her to stop working and, and all of that. So just sort of a a quiet novel, like you're in one woman's head the whole time. Um, although we do get wonderful sort of snapshot encounters as she's walking around the city on New Year's Eve in 1984. Um, so beautifully written um, encounters with the people of the city in all different walks of life, in all different um, jobs. Um, and we get her reflections on restaurants. Uh, you know, there's commentary on the AIDS pandemic because 1984 and um, the whole premise of her walk is she's actually on her way to a New Year's Eve party. Um, of course, doesn't want to arrive early. She's sort of a night owl anyway. Um, so we're getting her sort of very slowly heading towards um, that party. So this was just a phenomenal book. I absolutely loved Lillian Boxfish. Um, and so especially, I know it's still pretty rare to see really well-written, wonderful, um, older women characters highlighted. And um, she is just an absolute delight to spend um, some time with. So I really love this book and I highly recommend it. All right, so the other book that I read 
uh, Don't Forget to Write by Sarah Goodman Confino um, was also absolutely lovely. And that book is actually really more of a coming of age story. So we follow Marilyn um, in 1960, who's a young woman. She's partway through college. Um, she's uh, sort of breaking free of a traditional Jewish home. Um, she wants to become a writer. She doesn't want to just get married and have babies, which is what her family wants her to do. Her dad sort of allowed her to go to college, imagining that she would meet a really eligible husband there. Um, but she doesn't want to do that. She's very independent. She wants to carve her own path. Um, in the beginning of the book, she's home for the summer and uh, she sort of seduces the rabbi's son and they get caught in compromising circumstances in a wonderfully uh, dramatic way, um, which is funny, so I won't go into detail. Um, and her father is absolutely irate. He tries to force them to marry each other. Marilyn, of course, says, heck no. Um, and then her parents' solution is to ship her off to spend the summer with her great aunt Ada in Philadelphia, which as far as Marilyn is concerned, this is like the end of her life. So she gets to Philadelphia and it turns out great aunt Ada is exactly the opposite of what Marilyn was expecting. Uh, great aunt Ada runs an incredibly financially lucrative business all by herself. She's a matchmaker in the Jewish community of Philadelphia. Um, she's amassed a fair amount of wealth, uh, owns multiple properties all around the country, um, including a beach house in Avalon, New Jersey, which is where they subsequently actually spend most of the summer. Um, Marilyn sort of chafes under some of the rules that her great aunt imposes, um, but it turns out that they actually have a lot in common in terms of being these really smart, strong, independent women. And so the summer of the story is all about Marilyn um, sort of really reflecting on who she is and what she wants. Uh, she has some misadventures in New Jersey um, that her aunt uh, there's always this question of like, how much does her aunt know about what Marilyn is doing? And you sort of end up at the end of the book thinking that, of course, the aunt knew everything but wanted Marilyn to trip and fall um, and make mistakes uh, sort of on her own in a place where she wouldn't be constantly judged for it, like at home, um, but would still have like security and someone to pick up the pieces. Um, so she has some misadventures, like I said, and she learns from them and she develops this really close bond with Ada, um, which is where the other uh older female character comes in because ada is just an absolute delight i mentioned you know for her time she was incredibly ahead of it um in terms of like having an independent professional life um not being dependent on a man um and she's also just a wonderfully sort of sarcastic um acerbic witty character in, in some of the same ways that Lillian Boxfish was. So um, that story also was just absolutely delightful. I, I didn't want to put either of these books down. I just tore right through them because uh, I enjoyed the writing a lot in both of them and I enjoyed the characters a lot in both of them. Um, so different books in some sense, but, but both fundamentally about young women sort of seizing what they want out of life and running with it. Um, and then we also get these, uh, points of the, the older women who've sort of already done that, um, and, uh, and are able to provide some of that reflection and wisdom. And then Lillian Boxfish, we get it all within one character because we get her reflecting on her younger days. And in Don't Forget to Write, um, we get it uh, at the same time through the younger character and then also through um, sort of her counterpart of the, the older woman that she is um, potentially on track to become. Um, so yeah, I love both of those books. I highly recommend them. Have you read them? I would love to um, connect with other people who really enjoyed them. So that's what I've got for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.